My name is Jennifer Walsh, and I'm on a mission to get more people outdoors to understand and share the health benefits of spending time in nature, to fully comprehend the power that green spaces in nature have on our overall health, well-being, and mental state. We decided to film the entire season at the beautiful wellness community, Seren B. Their mission is to live and work in harmony with nature, connecting people to nature and each other, so choosing to film in this beautiful place was a perfect fit in every way. The conversations on my walk are open and lively. We speak to a cross-section of industry leaders, people with varied backgrounds, yet all share how their connections and time spent in nature have shaped their life and their work. Join me on a walk with Walsh. This season made possible by Mother Dirt. Good bacteria for great skin. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of A Walk with Walsh. I'm so happy to have none other than Pete Dominic with us. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. You're and at Seren B. Back in Seren B for the first time without my family. How weird is that? It's very weird because yeah. I'm always happiest when I'm with my wife and my daughters and we stayed right here at the Stone Cottage twice and, and so to be here without them is, is weird but I have a lot of really happy happy memories right right behind Isn't us. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. It's such a magical place Seren B. It absolutely is. It's uh, it's surrounded by so much nature and so many things that constantly mm. give you feelings and memories and ideas yes. and uh, peace. Yeah. Oh my God, there's so much. There's so much to talk about. Do so you want to go for a little stroll with me? Let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk. Isn't that what we're supposed to do I here? think that's what we're going to do here. We're going All to walk right. and talk and we're in nature. We're just enjoying this the scenery. This is an awesome idea. Tell us where you're from because for you, like the New York City guy, yeah, and yeah, like I... New York guy, how did you get from that to like wanting to be on a farm in Georgia? <laughs> uh, it's interesting because you, you have to wonder how anybody, you know, what their journey is in terms of the places they live. It's always interesting. But I grew up in upstate New York, okay. outside Syracuse, and what uh, I like to call, for this conversation, the Finger Lakes region. Okay. So there's all these lakes, yep. and I grew up water skiing and fishing in the summer, and I grew and you know playing the creeks and catching salamanders and crayfish and frogs, yep. And, yep. and then uh, we, dirty. we played, we had uh, BB gun wars, that's oh, what we did, yeah, did we, really? it was insane. Oh, yeah, we God. actually shot each other. <laughs> you still have both of your eyes. With BB guns, oh, we wore, <laughs> we wore goggles, of course. Okay, good, good. But, uh, and then in the, in the winter, skiing, snowboarding, yeah. and so then when I was in high school, I knew I wanted to either be a ski bum, move to Colorado, mm -hmm. and work in the recreational outdoor industry, or pursue a career in comedy. And I did the latter because I really want to live in, you know, Bright Lights, Big City, sure. New York City. And I moved to New York City. How old were you? Seven, 18. Okay. I was 18 Ooh, when I first moved to New York City. Yeah. Yeah. In 1995. And I lived there for 12 years. That's where I was when I met my now wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lived there together for a few years. But during that time, I really lost my connection to nature. I was obsessed with my career. Yep. I loved being in the city. I was excited to be the energy and the people yeah. and the industry that I was in. And I, I really lost, not, you know, never fully, but I, I, it wasn't something I thought about. You know, it's your 20s. Your 20s. And you're like in the city and everything's about like go, 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 networking, 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 exactly. and work, 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 work. Yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no nature to talk about. Uh, yeah, there wasn't. It wasn't a big part of my life. I tried to get you know in the parks in the city. I think whenever I can, but it wasn't a priority because yeah. I was the priority. Yes. And you know, trying to meet women and and work on my career yeah. and exercise. You know, whatever. You know, it was just your twenties. But then, anyway, after I met my wife and we met in nature in the most beautiful place Did you really? potentially in the world. My wife and I met at a waterfall in Switzerland. Oh come on! Top that, anybody? Can. Who can top? <laughs> That waterfall, it's like we met in like the sound of music. I like I, you couldn't, you could, like I can't ever get divorced no, because if I do, good. I can't top that. No, I can't be like, that. oh yeah, I met my second wife uh, at, on a space station, <laughs> which is unique, but maybe not okay, as romantic. Okay, wait a second, it can't be real. You can't. Like, yeah, so we met. We were both just crossing. Um, I had, That's I had to crazy. let the. I'm sorry, I have to let the star. That powers my home. Yeah. That was my way of sneaking in. I have solar. Okay, okay. Uh, hit my 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 dome <laughs> because that it, if yes. the hat protects the, the scalp is getting the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a little sunlight. Yeah. yeah. I'm down here down south, so <laughs> gotta get some of that. So anyway, we met in Switzerland. Yeah. And at this waterfall, and I made her laugh, and we How hiked. How did you do that? I wonder. You're, I did. So I did shy. what I do. Yep. I was wearing a sleeveless shirt. I was in great shape. Yep. I took my sunglasses off. She saw these green eyes, and that was it. Is the she way knew. I like to tell the story. She knew. Yeah. No, I knew. I, I there's a video of me saying, 
And my, my buddy says, what happened in Switzerland? And I said, uh, I met the girl I'm going to marry. And I did marry her. Like so two, day, two days after like meeting that. her, two days after meeting her, I knew I was going to marry her. Yeah. Wow. And we, she, she, we had our first daughter in the city. And I knew wow. then, mm -hmm. shortly, I mean, you live in the city. Yeah. And I, I said, even if I had millions of dollars, yes. I still don't want to have a life where I have to go down an elevator to take my child outside. And then when she's a toddler, I can't keep, take my eyes off her because she's going to get hit by a car. And there's yeah. no nature like how I grew up. I wanted to raise my daughter in nature the way I was raised. So I was excited to, to, to move out of the city. And when my wife got pregnant with our second daughter, that's what we did. We moved to what we uh, affectionately call the uh, the wastelands, the suburbs, <laughs> suburbs the, the burbs wastelands. of New York. We bought a, a, a raised ranch home for like a billion dollars yep, for yep. what, you know, of course. where I grew up, uh, yeah. it would be nothing. Of it course. would be nothing. But outside um, New York, it's a yeah. billion dollars. But then that's uh, when I really started to, I didn't want to leave the city, but I knew it was best for my kids. Yeah, yeah. But that's when I really started to rediscover nature. And now I'm 40. Ooh, 44, just turned 44. 44. And so now I really want to e move even further out and mm. be even more surrounded by nature, which is why I'm so psyched to be here at Saren B and, and with you and talking yeah. to you about it all because my childhood in nature was amazing, amazing, wow. magical. Well, that's interesting because I love the fact that we're both here at Saren B and I come from New York and I came down here and I just fell in love. Yeah. So being in a space like this, does this also like activate your creativity for what you want to do next in your life and all your next endeavors? Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, it, well, I, I think it's inevitable that if you're in nature, it activates your creativity. Even if you don't quote, consider yourself a creative person, and yeah. really everybody is, it's just that society or school tells you you're not. But uh, so being, being without distraction from screens yeah. in nature, always creates uh, a lot of ideas for me, but it also, more than it it's helps me be creative, it, it helps me deal with stress and anxiety mm. and, and even a little bit of depression. I'm not a depressive person, I don't have any kind of, but like environmental like things in your life. So I'm in a career transition and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out my life yeah. and being in a place like this just calms me. Mm -hmm. No matter what, even if things are going perfectly fine, it just calms me. So I just, I take a run every day outside, and that's at minimum what I'm going to get from yeah. nature. But I also am um, in my garden pretty much year round, and uh, even in the winter, I'm growing, you know, from seeds under lights. So it's wow. like nature inside. You got that side of you. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm obsessed with gardening. I'm not very good at it. I don't know what I'm doing. But you're but doing it. Oh my gosh! There's a YouTube video for everything. <laughs> Have you made your own YouTube video about gardening with Pete Dominic? I, I have, yeah, that I could do. I be something. I have some, but it's it, just th the about problem it. is most YouTube videos are kind of teaching people how to do. Like my gardening <laughs> video would be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I hope this watch grows. Me, watch me do it. Yeah, yeah. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm. So I'm obsessed with it. That's my, that's my sanctuary, my yeah. garden. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's as, as much as you get with. Uh, in the suburbs, you know, Rich Louvre, who I think you talk yes. to here, yes. um, is kind of my got yours too. We both love his oh my work, gosh, he's incredible. and he, he all of his work helped me um, decide that I wanted to, you know, be outside more with my yes. kids outside more and, and more more of all the things I had growing up. But what do you do as an adult outside? And so I have this this really uh, cool garden that I love, and I have raspberry bushes that grow right up in front of my daughter's That's bedroom so, windows cool. that they take for granted. Of course they do. But someday, They're kids. they'll what look back and they'll say, I had a, they'll be on a date. I this is how I picture it. I had a dad of mine that and was. there'll be raspberries and they'll be on a date and be like, you know, my dad. Exactly. Growing up, I had raspberry bushes. So basically the whole thing is to set them up for conversation. There you go. <laughs> As one does. As a yeah. father does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just, what just they're going to do on a date in the future. To and give how them cool you're going to be in their eyes. Something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think that being, yeah, to answer your question, cer certainly it, it helps my creative, mm -hmm. all my ideas about anything from work to, you know, what's the thing I can say or do for my wife today mm -hmm. to helping me with stress, anxiety, just daily stress and anxiety or, you know, more serious stress and anxiety. My dad just had a heart attack. So, you know, yeah. it's like it's so hard to deal with life in general. And, and it feels like sometimes everything is just so overwhelming and, and so burdensome for anyone so and anybody who says that. that that's not true yes um i'd like to see your internet history yeah <laughs> you're right though but you're absolutely right because people <laughs> don't talk about like stressors or just being like god this is a bit, like i'm going through a really rough time right now because you also have to put this facade on 
Um, I feel like many of us do. Yeah, sure. But the reality is like, wow, there's a lot of stuff happening to a lot of people right now in so many different ways yeah. and variables that we all kind of push aside or hide that we're kind of embarrassed to or don't want to put out in the public. But I think it's important that we all know that we're all going through stuff. And it's okay to say, God, this is it's really okay. yeah, absolutely. tough right now. And, and it's, okay. it's okay to say it and, it's, yeah. and we should name it. Yep. But it's also really important when you do name whatever is happening in your life and whether you do it with a friend or whether you do it publicly on social media, which plenty of people do, it's someone is going to say, well, have you tried this? It's almost like, yes. you know, when you get a cold and yes. someone's like, well, have you tried orange juice? And you're like, yes, <laughs> of course, I tried it all, okay? There's no, if there were a cure for colds that we would be, <laughs> we no, stop it. with the nonsense, but yep. you know, people are trying to help, but nobody right. ever necessarily says, you know, I've been really stressed out and always, you know, yeah. I, I guess we do, we give each other cures, but the point is that for me, this is it. Yeah. Like no matter what the, the, the problem is that's, that's happening, yeah. I just go, I, I go outside, I say this all the time, mm -hmm. I just run out in the woods. If I'm starting to have an anxiety issue, panic attack, which I haven't, really experienced too much of but in, yeah. the, in the rare times I just go right to this yes <laughs> and I look at it yeah. and I'm just like what is that how does that feel yeah, yeah what you know? these things are living and what kind of and and you just find any piece of nature anywhere yeah and you and, and use all your senses so right now I feel yeah. this yeah and I feel the Sun and mm -hmm. I hear the birds yeah and that's the other issue that a lot of parents, our generation of parents has, is really being afraid of so many things when, yes. in fact, everything is better for our kids than it was for us. I told you, we had BB gun wars. <laughs> now know. they have paintball. Okay, one is safer than the other, yes, but, but everybody's so to go outside. afraid. Yeah. And for any number of reasons. You know what? I got hurt outside a lot. Yeah. I did. And it was all worth it. I agree with you. I think that's the whole thing. We have to keep exploring because if we don't explore the, our own backyards, how are we going to explore ourselves to go and do things that are different or unique that kind of scare us? I think. Well, that's a really good point. And the other point is if we don't explore our backyards, then we won't appreciate them mm -hmm. and then we'll let them be destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. I said this with Richard also, like we can't protect or love that which we do not know, understand or experience. Like we're not going to protect something that we don't spend time in because we don't know what it is. So That's if we can't really protect profound. our backyard, yeah. well, you know, it's because it's yeah. so, we can't. We can't go on the way we're going on. We kind of have to kind of step out of ourselves a little bit and just say, what's in my backyard? What is this leaf? What's going on with it? How does it survive? Look at diversity. How are we going to do this properly yep. together? Freddie the Leaf <laughs> is a go. book. Fred eats a leaf? Freddie the Leaf. Okay. You mentioned leaf. Yeah. And as you said leaf, I saw a leaf. Mm -hmm. This leaf is dying. It's dead, yep. one would argue. But look at how many leaves have, have fallen off this, they're here. Yeah. And so when I was little, like many little kids, I was terrified of death. We weren't mm. religious. We didn't have a kind of sense of faith or afterlife. So I was really afraid of death. My mom gave me this book, Freddy the, the Leaf, which is about a tree's leaves that keep falling and they, you keep saying goodbye to their friends and there he goes and he's scared. But then he, when he finally falls, he floats down to the ground and he falls into the stream and he's en en enveloped in by nature and he basically goes back to the earth yeah. and it was the first thing that ever helped me um, understand and not be uh, paralyzed with fear when I would think about my mortality or my, my death and, and wow. that's how I view it now. Like I definitely want to be, uh, uh, you know, put back into the earth yes. and I've told my family, I was like, plant me. <laughs> plant me and grow raspberry bushes out of me and then eat the raspberries that are the fruit of my bounty. They're starting to do that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's I've, a real uh, thing. I saw HBO had a great documentary about it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and and uh, about the different ways people are choosing to, yes. you know, uh, have a funeral at the mm -hmm. end of their life, life planning, and we're so afraid of that, uh, especially here in America. We'll do, we'll spend however amount of money we can so to survive and never actually live. Yeah, absolutely. God, that's crazy. But yeah, that's, we can go down that path in a, a long, deep way. But I want to talk about also uh, what you're excited about working on right now, because I know you are like in this new frontier. I had a radio show on Sirius XM for 12 years. It was three hours a day. I interviewed three to four guests every day, and, and, it, and it created a, a great community of, mm. of listeners who were like-minded, curious, passionate, fighting apathy, and wanting to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that now on a podcast and hopefully YouTube elements. So I don't really know. I mean, I'm doing the po this podcast, I'm experimenting with that, 
and it's the same name as my radio show, Stand Up with Pete Dominic. And uh, who knows? We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm, def I'm taping a new stand-up comedy special. Good for you. And I'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. And, you know, figuring it out. I, I would love to do something connected to the environment and nature. I mean, look at this lake. I know. Isn't this incredible? Look at just, 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 and we're... It's beautiful. So often our faces are buried in screens. I mean, yes. the, how many hours a day? Like this, and we're not even talking to just this all day long. You're right. But look so you got to put it down and put it away. Yeah, we really do. And it's hard. I'm not saying, you know, you always... I know. You always are wondering who, who uh, who's going to contact... What am I missing? Uh, what am I missing? FOMO? Yeah, 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 of course. But the problem with this generation of kids, you know, yeah. and it's like my kids, I understand all of this stuff, and I have this appreciation for, for nature, but my kids are definitely... Mm struggling they're so addicted to their phones and they're they're so uh enamored with the the, the oh, social media sure. that, you know talking to their friends and everything and it's not their fault not. it's not their fault i'm not blaming them but i'm as a parent trying to make sure that they get a certain amount of vitamin n mm -hmm. as richard, richard Luke calls it every every day yes. and and it's hard because i don't want to have a fight with them but it's like put down your phone and go outside yeah eat a mud pie or two I mean, you with your mud pies. I mean, I can't help but they were delicious when I had them. <laughs> I, I just wish we had photos of you as a child eating a mud pie. I might have them somewhere. Pie. It could, it could if be you out do, there. you've got to put them on the next episode. I, I will, I'll let you know. I'll definitely um, Maybe share Maybe we should it with make you. some just to reminisce. Yeah, we could. I mean, I'm sure they'd be delicious. I know how to make them just right. So many fun things about, you know, our childhood in nature and. And I just, I just worry so much that my kids, I'm not providing that for my kids and that they're not experiencing it because it, it, it just, as we're talking, it just helps with everything. But and you're doing it. You're actually aware of it. And you're actually making them spend time yeah. outside because not many parents are even thinking about it, but you are. And I think that's a big difference. Yeah. That, look how beautiful that is. Big one. Yeah. I like the big leaves. It's gorgeous. Look and how I like their is. symmetry. Yeah. It's not unlike the symmetry in my face. <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> Perfection. Look at that utter, utter perfection. Ding. <laughs> it was the sunshine on my yeah. head just right. It's good. It's good. Perfect. Yeah. Your eyes look beautiful in the sunlight. Perfect. He knows. He knows how to grab the light <laughs> just right. He's like, look at me. More here. of a radio guy, but I'll do look what I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think you're you're getting them outside, and you yourself are exploring, like not just in nature, but like whatever you want to do. Like I right. think nature has helped you understand, like oh, okay, yeah. I get to move on and do some new things, and. I don't have to do one thing. I can do a whole bunch of different things. And again, that's our ability to kind of explore different options, especially as we get older. Yep. We've had a good storied past with lots of cool experiences. So what do we want to do next? Well, one of the things I certainly want to do with any, what some element of work is save this. Yes. You know, save it yep. and, um, and, and, and try to make sure that we give our kids the same thing that we had. So mm -hmm. through media or through policy or through activism, you know, saving this from being overdeveloped and, yeah. and, and polluted uh, is, is our responsibility and I'm not going to lie, it really irks me when other people don't have that yes. sense of responsibility with whatever your moral code is. If you're religious, of course, mm -hmm. in every religion it talks about conservation and, and leaving things better off. You know, tribal people obviously understood that was their, is their religion and uh, those of us who are, you know, very secular of course, you know, based on science and, and the future, like, how is it not part of everybody's ethical code to not yeah. take more mm -hmm. than they need? Yes. And don't get me on that I mean, economic we, argument. <laughs> we could go on for hours yeah. about that. Yeah. It's a whole different path, which could take us hours. But um, in saying that, would you really consider running for Congress or running for office? In I did way? consider it. I did consider it okay. after I left Sirius XM, or they left me, really. Um, I was sitting at home wondering what was going to be next and, and I got an email from my congresswoman saying that after 33 years she was resigning. Wow. And uh, I was like, well, I'm not doing anything. Why didn't I just do that? And it seemed like a, like a, 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 a very symbolic at that, the timing of it. Yes. But I, I, I waited out and I talked about it for about three weeks with a lot of people mm -hmm. and I don't think, while I think I would do a great job in Congress, I, I think that I can do a lot better. When I, when I, when I left serious, I wrote down three sentences. I want to save the planet, save democracy, and make the world a better place for my kids. Yes. And so one way would be Congress, but I think I'm more structured and my strengths lie more in, in what we're doing now, media mm -hmm. and communication yeah. and comedy and television, radio, podcasting, and hopefully highlighting all of these issues and creating awareness and, and offering solutions and, 
inspiring people. I think you can do a lot of that. <laughs> a lot. Sharing so. your voice. And is my cape on? Yeah, your cape is definitely on. Is it too tight? <laughs> this is my cape. There you go. See, I have a little color to it. Well, I think that's great. I can, there we go. That's, I think that's why it oh, looks good. Yeah, yeah, cape it's looks my cape. good. Great if people just tune in, they're like, this guy, uh, this right this guy got a, a leaf. It's my nature cape. There you it's go. It's my planet saving cape. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good on you. All right. I'll, it's I'll it's leave it there. Color. Then. You just leave it there? Okay. Yeah. Be colorful. Why All not? Right. Um, so, what I think is really cool is that you're doing it because that's kind of why I want to do these walks is to speak with people and elevate their conversations of why do you want to do it? What is it, yeah. what is it important to you or why is it important to you? Uh, and then we have to come together. And really, like you said, we have to come well, together. Well, that should and, be easy. Yeah. <laughs> should no, be, you're it right. Should be really you're, you're, you're absolutely right. My cape is itching me. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, creating, creating unity around a number of the issues that we are divided on mm -hmm. will never happen. But yeah. it will happen on issues that we're not necessarily divided on. And so when people fall in this tribal left-right hustle, oh, yes. uh, you, you, you're losing a sense of where you can work together on things. And, and it's just for me, that's, it's all nonsense. I have mm -hmm. major issues with, with a lot of other people on any number of controversial things. But I have issues with my wife. She has issues with me. Yeah. I have issues with my best friends. I have problems. I don't agree with anybody on anything. My wife and I right now cannot find a TV show to watch together. <laughs> oh, no okay? way. But, but the point is, that's, that's where you, you, you work on compromise. You keep yeah. finding ideas, whatever it yeah. might be, where you want to go to dinner. People don't agree on everything. No, they And these purity to. tests yeah. are preposterous and, and what is happening, how, how media and social media is dividing us. People need to be aware of this and they need to realize that even though that person might disagree with me on the most controversial issues from the science behind climate change to abortion or guns, all these hot button issues. Yes. Well, what if that person can help me fix this engine? Yes. Or, or help me change a tire? Or I don't know why I keep going to car problems. <laughs> but whatever solution that we can work together on in yeah. our local community, much less on our planet, we yes. can find ways to work together. And as you said, uh, find unity. Coming back to even like being at Sarah B, I feel like everyone here wants to come together here for a greater cause. It certainly cause. seems that way. Isn't it? You know? I know, I mean, every time I, I do come to this community, you know, that's why it was designed because it forces people where I live in the traditional suburbs in New York, nobody talks. Yeah. Like we don't talk to each other. Yeah. Our neighbors, our next door neighbors. Do you even know who they are? Barely. Yeah. And then you come here yeah. yep. and it's designed for walking. Yeah. And it's designed for not only talking an interconnection with nature, but mm -hmm. people are human animals, as we're learning in Rich Lou's new book, by the way. And, mm -hmm. you know, so you're connecting with animals and nature and plants, of course, but each other in a way yeah. that it doesn't mean you have to be in some deep relationship with your neighbor. But everybody here says hello and smiles. And I'm always every time I come down here. I'm shocked by that. I'm like, hey, what are you saying? Hi. I know. Like, easy. Everyone. Easy. Everyone Hello. Hi. Yeah, you don't know me. <laughs> and so, I don't know you. It's so and, true. And, you know, we're New Yorkers. It's like people. Why are they waving to me if they yeah. don't know me? Yeah, I don't yeah. have anything to give you. <laughs> I, well, I was just giving you love in that very moment. Oh, all right. Well, shock me with isn't some. Isn't that sad? That's a weird feeling that you come here, you're like, what? This is the way it's supposed to be. You're I supposed know. to be able to, uh, you don't have yeah. to have so much space between every home. I mean, listen, if you if you do, you do. That's that's fine too. And people are going to live in boxes in the city as well. But this is a, 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 a kind of a community that's one alternative. And I would argue, and obviously a lot of people would, but the, we, we need to build more communities uh, that are like this one, that mm -hmm. are walkable, where the neighbors say hello to each other, mm -hmm. where you have food growing along the sidewalks, yes. where you are just constantly connected to nature through all the all of these different trails yeah. that are here. When I first came here, the very first night, the 16-year-old kid next door was just walking around on his bare feet. I was like, "What's wrong with this kid?" <laughs> and then I realized, "Oh no, shoes. no, what's wrong with me?" Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's me. Oh, but it kind of—it's like we're so programmed when we're not here yep. um, because we've lived elsewhere and we grew up in a different way. But then we come here, like, wow, this is this is the way I feel good. I feel really connected, like super connected to everything here, especially when I got here, the animals, mm -hmm. which is really funny because Richard and I were talking about this as well. Just the minute I get here, I just want to see the animals. And then yeah. everyone else yeah. is like, hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, good to see you again. And it's just that, like you said, connection to your neighbors. Because I don't really know. I live in an apartment building in New York City. I know maybe like five people in the building. Right. Maybe five. I've been there 10 years. 
and 20 pigeons. There's lots of pigeons. There's just not as much of a, <laughs> a, 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 of, a of a choice for, for wildlife in urban areas. And, you know, kids yeah. aren't getting that as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm obsessed with anything from a bug to a salamander to a bird to, an, you know, a, 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 a cow. But I, it, it having that connection to other wildlife is also something that makes you realize that whatever your problems are, maybe they're a little smaller they're not as big as you thought that they were you know yes. and and we and and you realize for your kids that it's not dangerous out there that's you it you know i see this kid walking around on his bare feet my first instinct was did have you had your tetanus shot son <laughs> but i mean you just you can't you can't be so terrified for your kids that they're going to be you know these kids they walk all over the neighborhood and and they don't the parents don't know where they went mm -hmm. and you say to the parents you know where your kids are like no, no. Well, why yeah. Well, are you are you worried about what? Yeah. You know, in my neighborhood, my my daughter walked the dog, and a neighbor stopped me. You know, didn't know, and he says, "Is that your daughter?" And I said, "Oh dear, did the dog dump on your lawn? I'm sorry." He goes, "No, I just she's walking around alone. She's eight years old." I'm like, "Yeah, what's the problem?" So and he incredible. says, "Well, she could get snatched." First of all, snatched. Uh, see, that's what kind of verb is that. Yeah. But yep. he is worried about a kidnapping. A yeah. kidnapping. Has there ever been one here? No, but no, no. Exactly. That's the whole thing. Everyone's putting the fear that they have onto everyone else. And that's the worst right. thing for people. Yep. And things are better than they've ever been. And yes. most people are good. Most people are yeah. good. Yeah. I, most people, believe agree. it or not, are not kidnappers. I know. You don't know anybody who's a kidnapper. You don't know anybody who's been kidnapped. It's not a thing. It, it's a very rare thing. And it's somebody you know. It's not a stranger. So let your kids roam. Let mm -hmm. them run through the woods. And uh, let them fail and yeah. let them fall and let them appreciate everything that is outside yeah. as opposed to keeping them wrapped in bubble wrap and yes. you know chipped microchip which they all are you know you're, you know where your kids are at all times anyway if they've got a phone exactly and that technology by the way is not always accurate my wife and daughter were coming across the hudson river on the bridge and I, I lit up the, you know, the app that shows you where they are. And there's yeah. my wife's face on the bridge. And there's my daughter halfway up in the middle of the river. Just her face in the middle of the river. I'm like, swim, swim, Ava, swim. And then they refreshed and she was back on the bridge. I was like, oh, it was just off. It was just, the, oh, it was just whew. way off. Ah, I thought she was in the middle of the Hudson. Cause I, but that's another form of anxiety that technology is creating yes. that is not necessary. What was I even worried about? Yeah. I really, I, well, I'll tell you what I was worried about. They're going to come home and the house is going to be a mess. My wife's going to kill me. I had to figure <laughs> out they were 15 minutes away. <laughs> to clean the house. Yeah, that's why if my wife was in the river, I would be in a wor as worried. She'd <laughs> give me a little extra time. She's a strong swimmer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, getting back to the that, too, is the fact that you're, you're using our, our senses when we're outside. We're not when we're, like, addicted to our screens or we're inside yep. doing all of our yep. work. We're just not activating our senses. So... It's and that, and it's interesting problem. that you said that because I realize I've been holding this leaf for a long time and it's, and it's in a, and I mentioned the kidney's bare feet. So our senses now, we can smell the air. It's yes. a crisp fall, autumn day. I love the word crisp to describe crisp. autumn. Yeah, crisp. And we like can feel, you know, the trail under our feet, mm -hmm. but you're not directly connected to it the way you were if you're in your bare feet, yep. the way you might be if Grounding. you're riding a horse, you're connected mm -hmm. to that animal. And I think that's why I might have this leaf because I'm just feeling it as I'm talking to you, and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, the the sense yeah. of touch is yeah. is directly touching nature, you know, and even even you know when the sun is on my skin, that's nature, and so just have, being as connected to it in as many ways as I can, is probably a, a calming thing, a reassuring thing. And you're I don't aware know. of it. Smell. It smells good. Yeah. Is it crisp? I, that's my favorite thing about autumn: <laughs> the smell of the, oh the leaves. Oh my god, the leaves! I know. Not that that's that original. Well, even but. being here. In Georgia, yep. it's just such a beautiful time of year. It's just spectacular. And I didn't know that this place existed, and then when I did, it's like, this is, if you, you can get back. here, great, but I think what Steve Nygren would say, who designed this community, um, is that we want to build these everywhere. Yeah. If you can come and be here and live here and visit here and use this as a model, which is what I think Sarah and B more than anything else is, mm -hmm. it's a model community. It doesn't mean every community has to be identically like this one. And by the way, this one is so diverse in yes. terms of its architecture mm -hmm. and, and everything. But this is one concept of biophilic design yes. that, that other people and other communities across the country and the world should consider. Renewable energies mm -hmm. and, and all, 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 everything that comes with all of this. Yeah, it's just beautiful. And thank you for doing this, by the way. Thanks for coming on the oh show. Gosh, so thanks for fun. walking and talking and so sharing your fun. insights and your 
almost your it's like a stand-up hour with you. It's kind of great, which is kind of nice. Is there anything else you wanted to share before we say goodbye? Just do everything that you can to appreciate the natural world around you. And when things are becoming too much and overwhelming, think about running outside and think about that for your kids as well. And support important organizations like the Children in Nature Network mm -hmm. and get books written by naturalists and read about nature, the, you know, the icons of generations past and the, the rich Louvre's and David Orr's of the New Nature Movement, Bill yeah. McKibben, you know, read about read about it. Come in nature and reading about nature is, mm -hmm. is something I, I really like to do as well. So um, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I loved having you a part of this. It really means a lot to me that you came down here and to share this, and it's been so beautiful. And uh, I'm excited for what you're about to do next. Me too. Me thank too. You. Thank and, you. And uh, do you have any hash, or do you have any um, Instagram? What's your Instagram? Pete Dominic. Pete Dominic. Pete Dominic everywhere. Stand up with Pete Dominic, the podcast. And uh, I look forward to hearing from, from you. And thanks yeah. so much for having me. Well, thank you. And yeah. thank you everyone for tuning in. Till next time, we'll see you soon. This episode of A Walk with Walsh wouldn't be possible without our sponsor, Mother Dirt. Learn more about all their great products. Clean. We create habits around this word from the moment we're born. We clean ourselves, our kids, our homes, our environment so that we can be healthy. Are we? Are clean and healthy starting to become two different things? What about the kind of clean that comes with healthy, with being human, with thriving? Maybe that clean is something different. And I want to thank our season partners, the In at Serenby and Igni Productions. Continue the conversation by subscribing to our YouTube channel and the companion podcast available at Apple Podcast. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next Wednesday for more walks.